here with the Ionic 6 and it's uh, one that's getting a lot of interest and it's after winning World Car of the Year and that was a combination of World Electric Car of the Year and also the World Design Car of the Year. Let me know in the comments if you like the design because it is starting to be a small bit you like it or you don't like it. Personally I think it's the majority of people are starting to like it um, and it's all about efficiency and we're going to talk about that in this video but the area that I'd like to start with is around the back. If you're interested in all things EV and you'd like to support the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future updates. With that sloping roof line, it is all about aerodynamics and you can actually see where how low down that shoulder line goes here. Drag coefficient of 0.21, just to put that into context, the Tesla Model 3 is 0.23. So this is the one of the most slippery aero vehicles on the planet. Starting at the top, you've got your translucent shark fin aerial, you've got a large back window with no wiper you've got this kind of a whale spoiler whale fin and you've got that built-in brake light so that high level brake module at the top you've got that new kind of flatter hyundai you know whether that's to do with aerodynamics or not you've this little ducktail spoiler and then you've got that pixelated and you get about 700 of these pixelated between lights and indentations etc around here a full width light bar when the lights are on uh, daytime when the lights are on uh, regular mode it's just the top line when it's braked that line en engages and this line and then the indicators are built into those pixelated lights as well underneath then you've got the gloss black cladding and depending on the colors and there's nine different colors you've got whites blacks silvers grays you've got a green you've got this red and you've got a couple of blues as well and there's this biophili biophilic biophilic blue kind of looks purple it's already on my channel i'll stick the link up on the screen i saw it in sweden uh, i definitely wouldn't call it blue but it's it's down as blue but depending on that one of that exterior color will dictate the color of the cladding depending on the trim level and there's three different trims in ireland in the us there's three trim levels and in the uk currently there's only two trim levels well that will dictate whether that is black or silver the color and then the trim will dictate whether it's rubber or gloss black so it, there's a lot of combinations going on here i don't think you can choose i want that color with that uh, cladding i think depending on the color they've decided to, to go with the cladding you've got these kind of like they look like bumper overriders you've got your indicators um or so your fog lights your brake lights etc again more pixelated lights down here this is the elegance trim so it's kind of the middle of the road in Ireland, we're calling them elegance and finesse. And I can't remember what the first one was. Uh, I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. Push button, you've got your 360 reversing camera there. And it is a hatch, or sorry, it is a traditional boot lid rather than an actual hatch. Good and wide, good and deep, a small bit shallow, 401 liters, and there is a small bit of a subfloor in underneath. And you can push button it down and also lock the vehicle as well. I, I'm really interested in the rear of this vehicle. I don't think there's anything else like it in the road. A lot of people are comparing it to the likes of the Porsche. A lot of people are comparing that swooping design to a, like a Mercedes CLS. I think it's, it's something different. It's based on that eGMP platform from the Hyundai Motor Group. So that will be the same as the Ionic 5, the Kia EV6. There will be sportier versions of this. Let's pop around the front and have a look at the front. At the front, you can see from the top all the way down, there's so little to interrupt the airflow over this car. There's literally nothing here. Uh, the window wipers are held nice and tight underneath. A couple of creases on the bonnet, which are really nice. You've got the, on the middle to upper level trims, you have those LED matrix lights. Uh, you've got this pixelated. You've got the high-low beam in a kind of a horizontal format. Glass black cladding that we talked about. Some silver. You've got that Aero Hyundai badge, and then you've got some active air cooling. So these flaps will open depending on whether HVAC's engaged or whether it needs to cool the battery. And then also when they're closed, <clears throat> you have the side curtains. The air comes in around the side and out over the wheel arch and the wheel. Also on the front, you have your front. And depending on whether it's the rear wheel drive or the all wheel drive, will dictate whether it's 41, sorry, 45 liters or 14 liters. This is a rear wheel drive middle spec. And you've got the 45 liter, handy for cables or shopping or takeaway, whatever it may be, uh, some storage, etc. The only other reason you'd be going in here is for your window wiper washer fluid. But overall, yeah. Some people are saying this reminds them of the old Hyundai Coupe. 
Um, I think stylistically the whole thing overall works well in my opinion, but again let me know in the comments if that's the case. Down along the side and you can really see that wheel arch uh, cladding there. Uh, it comes in two different wheel sizes, 18s and 20s. The 18s are very much aero. Uh, the 20s are only available on the finesse, that's the top level trim. So you have the three different trims in Ireland, called different things in the US, I think it might be called or in the UK it might be called Ultimate. So depending on your market, go and have a look at the names. I like changing all the names where they are. So on the rear wheel drive and on this trim, you're gonna get 18s and then on the upper level trim, all wheel drive, you get the 20 inch wheels. The difference in range, so this is coming in at 614 kilometers WLTP, that's the 77 kilowatt hour battery, 74 kilowatts of that are usable. There is a entry level battery, 53 kilowatt hour. That's in Ireland at the moment, maybe in the US. I know it's not in the UK yet, um, so depending on what you want. But with that all wheel drive and the 20 inch wheels, those uh, WLT mileages comes down by about 100 kilometers. So it would go from 615 down to about 515. So if you want that style of the bigger wheels and that all wheel drive difference, you're losing about 100 kilometers worth of range. But uh, body color door mirrors with that retractable, it has the 360 camera and that blind spot camera we'll talk about when we're driving. More pixelated LED lights here, swooping line, gloss black B pillar, very flush again. Body color door handles and they lock, or sorry, they go flat when, they, when it locks. And, uh, and then if you want to open, you just, so rather than opening and closing uh, as I'm passing by, then you've got that cladding in underneath, so this is the gloss black. You have that matte rubber on the entry level trim, and depending on the color, then will it be black or silver? Then you can really see that swooping uh, tail on the back of it. When I sat in this in Sweden, I wasn't too happy with the headroom, but actually I've, sit, I've been living with this for the last week, and we'll talk about the inside in it, and surprised actually how good it was. So that's the side profile. Let's have a look at the charging port on the rear driver's side. Dimensions on the Ionic 6 is the about 4.85 meters long, about 2 meters wide with the wing mirrors, about 1.85 without, and about 1.5 meters tall. Ionic 5, its sibling, is a bit taller but a bit shorter. Uh, internal room is probably a bit longer in the, the wheelbase is a bit longer, 2.95, sorry, 3.91 on this, 3.95 on the Ionic 5, so I think where it's getting that uh, where it's utilizing that extra wheelbase on the five is the boot is a bit bigger it's 525 liters if i'm not mistaken so size wise it's a bit lower and a bit longer than the ionic five just to give you a bit of context charging is around the rear you can press the button and inside then you've got your ccs and co uh, co combo charger you have ac speeds up to 11 kilowatt and with that 77 kilowatt hour battery it's going to take about uh, seven hours on a traditional single phase wall box in ireland and then on the continent in three phase, you're talking about 11, sorry, seven hours. So 11 or seven, depending on which one you have, seven or 11. Uh, and then DC, it can go up to 230 odd uh, kilometers. So depending on how fast you get the charger, it can go from 10 to 80% in about 18 minutes. Uh, give you a bit of context, that's 351 kilometers in 15 minutes, if you can get it. Uh, and those chargers are starting to be rolled out around the country, Ionity, etc., etc. Let's have a seat on the inside. Inside the Hyundai, and let me just clarify this. In Ireland and the UK for a number of years, it was Hyundai. Lots of bleeps and bloops, so you can see some of the LED lights coming on here. It was Hyundai, and that's how the brand used it itself. But in the North America, you say Hyundai, and in, or sorry, Hyundai, and then in UK and Ireland, we're starting to start to say Hyundai. Um, so lots of different ways of saying it, but I'm just gonna call it the Ionic 6, and let me know in the comments what way you'd like it said but the brand does want us to start stop, stop saying Hyundai and start saying Hyundai. On the door, you are very minimal buttons because they've used the whole speaker into the handle and you've a lot more leg room. So on the width of the cabin, it's a lot better. So you only have your memory presets on the middle and upper level trims. And then you have this long handle that you can use as a handle, but also as a storage device. And then you've got that translucent theme coming through again um, in the door pocket. You have what I like to call, and a lot of people are using this, the analogy of, it's like the end of, a, of a, a, an airplane, but I like to call them like the whale fin coming up here. Um, Hyundai in themselves are, Hyundai themselves are calling it 
the crash pad, so it's translucent. But what this is on the upper level trim, on the finesse trim, you can have mirrors for uh, wing mirrors, cameras for mirrors, and the screen would be here. On the A pillar, you've got that Bose tweeter. Down above my right knee, you've got your handbrake, you've got your ESP off, you've got your electric charge port uh, open and close, and you also have the tailgate open and close, and you've the adjusting for the mirrors. Up and down mirrors are all done on the center console, but we'll get to that. Steering wheel is pretty similar to the Ionic 5. You've got some buttons on the side, uh, but they've swapped the buttons around. You can see my seat moving forward there with the uh, engine start, with the electric motor starting up. Um, on the left-hand side, it's a speed control menu on the dash, etc. And then on the right-hand side, you have modes, voice, all that kind of stuff. Perfect. And then we're going to kick. Okay. Um, uh, behind that, then, you've got your regenerative brake, and you've got uh, zero, one, two, and three. Uh, and it also, there's a one-pedal mode. On the left-hand side, you've got your lighting and indicator stock. On the right-hand side, you've got your window wipers. Underneath that, then, you've got your mode selector, drive neutral, and then for park, you push in. Your drive modes are on the st steering wheel as well. I always like that, because it's a knurled edge, it looks like it's twist, but it's just press. And the steering wheel, then, is reach and rake. So reach and then rake. Uh, steer, our screens, the, in, the driver cluster is a 12.3 inch screen. It's very similar to the Ionic 5, so nothing new there. Uh, and then you have all your data up there, your kilometers that you've, the tripometer, seatbelts on or off, etc, etc. And then on the infotainment side, you have very similar to the Ionic 5, so they haven't changed much. Some of the icons have changed, so this, uh, the climate control, now they're calling warmer slash ventilation. On the medium and upper level trims, you're going to get heated and ventilated seats in the front. They're also memory and they're also relaxed. So what I mean by that is they'll go right the way back. So there is a little button on the side. Make sure that there's enough space in the rear seat and press the switch again. And what that will do then is bring the seat all the way back and then lower it down I don't know if I'm still even in frame. <laughs> so this is if you're charging or chilling out or whatever you want to do. So really nice. And so then to bring it back up. So the, the screen is really good. Perfect. I'm zooming up there. And you've got all your regular um, infotainment stuff on it. I might do a separate video on that, actually. Tactility is a big thing inside the Ionic 6. And depending on the color, I think, dictates on the materials used as well. So depending on the external color, we'll take, take what the internal color as well. And there's two good colors, a dark and a bright, and this is the bright one. So you have um, a lot of recycled plastic. You've got some soft touch on the doors. You can hear that it's textured, but underneath then that translucent, it looks like it's going to be textured, but it's actually smooth. Then you've got a, a kind of a, I don't know what to describe it as. It's kind of like a textured center bridge, but internally then the buttons, it's kind of like a, like an emery board, kind of a sandpaper kind of a feel. Really interesting use of fabrics. All the leather in here has been eco-treated, so they're using flaxseed to dye it and to treat it, etc. You've got your main climate control underneath here, so your um, the temperature, recirculation, windows, but you have shortcuts to media, nav, map, um, radio, cameras, etc., etc. It's a start-stop button, so it's not it's keyless entry, but not keyless start. Sorry, it is keyless start. It's push button start. It's not an automatic. And I've been caught a couple of times this week where I've gotten out and thinking that by me sit getting off the seat, like some of the other EVs, that it's going to be just going to turn off. But I've had to go back and press the switch. Uh, yeah, exactly. First world problems. Uh, on the bridge, you have a Qi wireless charging pad and it's cooled. You have USB type A because it isn't wireless. Android and CarPlay, Apple CarPlay, it is wired still, which is an interesting one. Uh, when you're charging it, the light's going underneath. You've got your two cup holders, you've got your automatic hold, your center locking, and then your windows all here, all individual buttons. You do go for the door all the time, but it's just about getting used to it. And then you've got your armrest with two more USB-Cs. So you've got one A, you've got wireless, you've got two here, and then you've got a 12 volt in underneath again, that translucent kind of um, center pocket in underneath. You've got your slide out that we saw in the Ionic 5. The difference between this and the 6, if you remember the Ionic 5 had that movable center kind of storage area, whereas this one is that, that bridge that they're calling it. Really nice, tactility seats are really nice and comfortable with that relaxation, but the ventilation on the middle and upper level trim is really nice. Uh, this has the bright interior, so the bright headliner. So not missing the 
sunroof too much but i'm always a big fan of a sunroof just for that light in the cabin i do appreciate it does affect range so that seat is for me and what's going to be really interesting is when i get out it'll actually come out as i'm leaving and then we'll have a seat in the back to see what it's like in the back of the ionic 6. in the back of the ionic 6 You've got that, that design language brought over through. You can actually see some of the ambient lighting and there's a lot of lighting in shoot going on in this car. So you've got uh, the LED strip, but you also have ambient lighting in the door and the two-toned it as well. You've got tinted windows in the medium and upper level trims. You've got these really slender seats, so space-wise. And that seat has come back to let me out. I'm six foot two, 188 centimeters. His feet can kind of get in underneath. Tie isn't great because of that. there isn't the height in it. You've got that, EGMP platform underneath so to try to keep the seats low it's not bad don't get me wrong and then I my high head height yeah you know I'm six foot two so anybody over six foot two is going to start feeling it but you can move your butt forward uh, you've got some nets in the back you've got two USB type A's you've got some storage on the passenger seat you've got the ability of moving them forward or back I presume that doesn't happen when there's somebody seated in it and then in the middle of where the passenger would sit that third center seat there is the um, vehicle to load uh, option and that pumps out 3.6 kilowatt in the three pin plug in the cabin but also on the adapter that you can get uh, so you've got your central LED light, you've got your armrest with the two cup holders in it. You've got a nice little pocket for your phone, you've got that ambient lighting, you've got the door handle, nice, you know, an old traditional door handle instead of a button, it's lovely. So the build quality and you've got that texture finish coming around. In the back of the Ionic 6 you've got two Isofix seats positions in the rear is it wide enough for three people the middle person hasn't got their own dedicated seat but yeah there you could get three smaller people in the middle for sure um what hyundai have done is because of the seat belts are flopping around the place and they're not bad i haven't heard them all week but there is a specific little slot that you can put the seat belt holder into on the side panel here just at the seat pillar and that'll stop them moving around but i haven't felt the need to do that at all all week lots of space in the back here for leg Thigh isn't great, as I said. Head at six foot two, I'm okay with it. And you've got your three headrests in the back as well. Memory positions on the front seats. There's two, I know somebody asked me about that recently in one of my videos, and it's a completely flat floor. Let's take it out for a drive. Driving the Ionic 6 is, there's a lot of beeps and boops. It is speed sign recognition. It is change of speed zone. It is school notification so yeah there is a lot of beeps and boops in it but probably a good thing because sometimes you don't realize how fast you're going in certain vehicles uh, just going over a speed bump there and we're talking about the, the suspension it's set up slightly firmer than the ionic 5 and that i think that's a good thing because the ionic 5 sometimes can be a small bit marshmallowy but this is yeah nicely set uh, and I think that's all to do with making sure it's not moving up and down with regards to aero too much and making sure that it is as aero. It's a com nearly a complete flat, pa flat pan in underneath uh, the body itself. But yeah, everything's about aerodynamics and um, some of the stats that I've had, I've had it and I've driven it since uh, EV. And then battery energy information uh, i've been getting uh, 16.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and that was down to tullamore for a 25 year anniversary of bni business network international i was a uh, involved with that organization for a number of years and so yeah down the motorway back up the motorway and still getting 16.1 like that is super really really efficient and i think sometimes the ionic 5 just because it's not that aero doesn't get the efficiency of the the leg and the legacy hyundai 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 um the likes of the kona and i know there's a new kona coming out towards the end of this year but the original kona and the current kona are super efficient and on that hyundai motor group the likes of the kia ev6 and nero like the koreans do efficiency really really well Visibility is actually not bad, even though it's a, a, a car that's not that tall. It's a nice, nearly um, windscreen. It's not too raked. Uh, wing mirrors are good. We have the uh, blind spot on them. We also have 
blind spot on you. Hopefully you can pick it up. If not, I'll put a bit of B-roll into it with the blind spot popping up on either side um, on all Ionic 6s, sorry, from mid-range Ionic 6. You can hear there on the cobble streets of Dunleary in South County, Dublin. Um, suspension is taking it fairly well. You can uh, customize the braking, the acceleration, the drive modes. So it's great to see that some people don't want um, super responsive acceleration. They want something a lot smoother. Some people, the steering wheel weight. And so the fact that you can customize all of that, I think we're getting starting to get the real customization and the abilities of electric vehicles. And you can have it exactly how you want it. And that's all, that's a positive for everybody. The infotainment 12.3 inch screen and the driver cluster, very good, very clean. You can have it set up so that it's, uh, it adjusts to the brightness. It's, uh, I like to prefer it in dark mode, but you can set it to full-time bright mode if you want. Icons are nice and clear, very responsive. It is isn't wireless charging. Uh, it isn't wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay as we talked about before. On the steering wheel, we talked about the modes have changed. Uh, sorry, the buttons on, on the left and the right have been swapped from the Ionic 5. Uh, and you have that flappy paddle, uh, level I pedal, level 3, level 2, level 1, and then 0. So depending on the regenerative automatic hold as well on the handbrake. It's a really nice drive. It's a really comfortable drive. These seats are really nice as well. And on the mid and up level trim, you get them ventilated. So on the odd hot day we get here in Ireland, but if you're watching this in North America or other parts of the world, let me know in the comments where you're watching this from. I always like to see geographically where videos are being watched. Uh, I get it in that analytics, but just that bit of engagement always helps. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Uh, there is a Hyundai Hyundai uh, link up on the screen there of all my electric Hyundai reviews, but I review all types of electric vehicles just to see the breadth of vehicles that are available here in Ireland, but also starting to do a bit more global stuff as well. So um, the support is always welcome. Comment, like, and share. Uh, keeps the YouTube algorithm happy with my channel. Price here in Ireland, uh, we're changing our grants now in the next coming uh, months on the 1st of July, but at the moment this is 48,295, and then after the 1st of July that will jump up by 1,500 because the grant has been reduced by 1,500. So that will go to, that's for the 53 kilowatt hour battery, rear wheel drive, and that will go to an entry level a trim that will jump up to 49,795. So still sub. 50,000 euros and um, probably the competitor and Tesla and changing their prices has other manufacturers looking at what they can charge and versus uh, this will be going up against the likes of the Tesla Model 3, Model Y. Then the next level up then, you're, if you want the bigger battery, that starts off at mid 55s uh, and that will change slightly with the grant. And then this level is the upper level, medium level trim with the bigger battery, uh, the Elegance, I believe it's called. And this is coming in at 62,000 euros. And then if you want the all wheel drive, larger battery, it only comes in that, but that comes with the 15 or the 20 inch wheels. That is six, just under 68,000 euros. So, um, Hyundai seems to be holding that price point well, and the fact that this is pretty much an Ionic 5 with a different body on the top of it, and it is a different body and different styling and better range, etc. But I think what Hyundai are starting to do is starting to take a leaf out of the Toyota playbook and starting to flood the market with multiple different models, shapes, and sizes. And the fact that Hyundai has a march on them with regards to the electrification, I think that. Hyundai could become the new Toyota in Ireland and uh, of the top 10 cars that sell in Ireland currently five of them are Toyota um, small to large I'm really excited to test and look at the new Kona that's coming out and um, that'll be really good so price point I'm very surprised and everybody was when it came out first with that smaller entry level that standard level battery to be sub 50,000 euros and even after the grant like that range you're talking uh, WLTP it's saying 425 for that smaller battery real world you're probably talking 325 350 depending on how well you drive it and then um the this 77 kilowatt hour with the rear wheel drive is saying 615 614 kilometers wltp real world you're probably looking at around that 500 520 kilometer range but if you drive it well and efficiently 
it will reward you in range. Uh, temperature will affect that as well. You will have the um, colder temperatures eating into it slightly, but in the warmer temperatures, it is you know, going to be definitely hitting that. And there's a couple of EV drivers out there that are tracking everything and trying to get the highest range that they've gotten. So if efficiency is, your na is, is the name of the game for you, like the Ionic 6 is very hard to beat uh, styling wise and I know some people don't like the look of it but as I said they're probably in the minority now from everybody that I've talked to and people definitely have seen, seen it in the flesh probably the colour makes a difference as well I really like this red one I was going up to the front desk of uh, Hyundai Ireland Hyundai Ireland apologies I keep having to correct myself I've been saying it that way for 40 odd years and I saw some Ionic 6s outside the door and then there was, a, 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 I call it grey, but it's actually in as a kind of, is in one of the blue colours, it's like a Nardo grey. But on camera, I just think the red one for yourselves comes across really well. That vehicle to load uh, functionality as well, I think more and more people are starting to realise the capabilities of it and the ability to go out camping or if something happens and you need to keep a fridge plugged in, having that adapter, now it is an extra, but having that adapter there and pulling 3.6 kilowatt from your car, um, it, it's the step before vehicle to grade and vehicle to home. So that V to L is, is really, really uh, impressive. And the fact that you've got a three pin plug uh, in underneath the rear bench, these all these things, and once you've had them and you once you start to utilize them, it really starts to make a difference. And when you're looking at other models and other cars, they're going, well, do you have that or not? Because that's what I'm used to now practicality of the Ionic 6 it also can tow it can tow up to 1500 kgs that will affect the range of course but if you do need to tow every now and again you can have that tow pack put on it for sure some other features I really like about the infotainment system is that you can connect two phones and again this all sounds not important but if you've got two people in the car one person is listening to music and the other person is driving you can be swapping back and over between the two phones and dictating as to who has control of the infotainment system so all of these things are starting to become the norm and people are looking for it and i get it in the comments on the channel can you pair two mobile phones with this and, and operate them at the same time so really really good to see those small things that manufacturers mightn't think make a big difference in anybody's lives but yeah it's convenience it's the capability of it. Ambient lighting is a huge factor in this car and we've got that strip, we've got top and bottom and you can two-tone it as well and you can change the theme and change whether you're relaxed or whether you're focused. So light plays a huge factor in uh, your, if you're doing long range driving, etc. Zero to 100 km an hour on the rear wheel drive is 7.4 seconds and 5.1 seconds in the all wheel drive. Weight of the Ionic 6 is just over 2,000 kg, so it's definitely on the um, lighter side of some of the EVs we've recently tested on the channel. Still two ton, don't get me wrong, but um, utilizing recycling materials and lightweight materials is starting to really make a difference. And as I said, the Ionic 6, the Ionic 6 is all about efficiency and gaining that range. So making sure that we don't have anything. Uh, extra that we don't need to carry i'm sure that they've been out with the weighing scales for every single element of this vehicle but the quality is definitely there you can definitely feel the quality so it's it's all good the on the rear wheel drive the electric motor is 168 kilowatts with 228 ps giving you 350 newton meters of torque and on the all-wheel drive top level trim it's 239 kilowatt combined giving you 325 ps and 605 newton meters Safety is very important and this is a family car and in the Euro NCAP this has achieved five star best in class uh, for its uh, safety driver assists, crash technology, uh, crash prevention, etc, etc. So reversing out of a spot, pedestrian warnings and the automatic um, highway driver assist too is very good, had it down to Tullamore and so it has that um, level two autonomous driving. So it's turning the wheel as it's, your hands are still on the wheel, same wheel, but it's following the contour of the road. It's also um, adaptive cruise control. So there's a lot of good things within uh, the Hyundai, Hyundai Ionic 6. Uh, and that's the reason it's getting that five star, but that driver, use, the dr usability as a driver, very, very comfortable. Hopefully you've enjoyed my review of the Hyundai Ionic 6.
Make sure you've subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment and let me know what you think, where you're watching from. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.